This looks like a runnable rack here, folks. So, uh, Tippy, it looks like he's got maybe one trouble ball in the 13. So, and it looks like we're going to take care of that right now. Alright folks, if you're in the chat, let's see some predictions here. Christy Heim gives us Dano by three. Um, I will go out on the limb here, and I think Tippy pulls this one back. I think we get to see a little Tippy pool action. I'm going to say Tippy by two, uh, so I'm going to go with Tippy seven to five. Um, and I look, I'm looking pretty good right now. So he's up by one and breaking. Um, he walked by the table in between the sets here and said, uh, no more Mr. Nice Guy. I'm not sure what that means, but it can't be good for Dano. I'm hoping for 7-5, truly, guys. I, nothing against Dano, but I just want to see the third set here. I couldn't find anybody to get action with on this, so um, I'm just hoping for uh, for three sets and uh, some good pool. So um, looks like we've actually got a full house down here. Um, you know, just looking around, we've got quite a few heavy hitters. We've got Keith Hansen, Brian Ruth, Shandy Dvorak. Uh, We've got uh, quite a few others down here as well. Alright, so uh, hopefully the stream is rolling good for you guys. On my end, I've shown that we've got uh, plenty of bandwidth and we're rocking and rolling here. Dano's got kind of a odd set coming in. We've got in the booth now Keith Hansen of Keith Custom Cues. Uh, the very generous man who's uh, helping put this on tonight. Uh, what would you do here, Keith? I'd run them out. <laughs> You'd run them out, folks. You would run them out. <laughs> well, it looks like a tough table from here. Yeah, I. Looks like he's going to chase the solids. Looks like the three balls open now. His last tough one's the two, then, from there, it looks like. Yeah, the two and the six. If he's got the six here, he might be looking good. Nice. We've got a couple of predictions so far. Christy Hine is saying uh, Dano by three. I said Tippy by two. Looks like Colt Mayfield's predicting Tippy by two as well. I'm just hoping to see a third set. What do you think? I think so. I think Tippy gave the first set to Dano just so he could play a third set. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to show off a little bit, don't he? Well, you know. No, that's that's what Tip, Tippy told me to tell everybody. That. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. He he walked by he walked by in between sets and said, "No more, Mr. Nice Guy." And I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it can't be good. Well, he hasn't missed here yet. Yeah, no kidding. I tell you what, I that think, uh, I think Daniel's got a good shot at this here. So. Eight's a little tough, but. Well, he, I think you can use the five to get it back. What do you think from here? I'm thinking 
He's got to figure out a way to get on that four ball. I mean, the five ball's got a home. Four ball's got a home, but you got to get to it. He's on the wrong side of the three to get there from there. So you almost got to take what the you almost got to take what the five will give you from here and hope the eight ball doesn't get pushed into trouble. I would think. I mean, you you've got to move the eight from here. The fourteen ball's in the way unless you play the three ball at the fourteen. Yeah. One thing about Dan, though, he reads the table better than anybody. Yeah, he really does. We were actually just discussing that before they started this set. Uh, I felt that Tippy actually had the advantage in rotation, and Tippy uh, or Andano is just so methodical in his eight ball play. He's really. He's steep competition no matter who you are. Absolutely. I know. Got a little bad roll there. Bumped the eight a little too much. But. Yeah. I know uh, I know. last night <laughs> after Tippy snaps off the tournament, he's, uh, he, if he wins this, he wants to play Danny next. So, uh, Danny Olsen, if you're out there watching this, you've got action. That'd be a really good match. Yeah, that would be some. I would love to see him play some bar box eight ball. So I know uh, the discussion uh, that we've been having is uh, we want to find a big table to stream on, and we want to put you and Sam Dissy in the box. What do you think about that, Keith? That'd be fun. Find a nice tight nine foot table. I believe there's a couple available around here, and. Uh, Wow, that was a nice shot on the three to move that 14 yeah, out of the way. <laughs> so how do you get on the four from here? Because his options are limited on the seven. You can't draw over for it, can you? You almost have well, to run down can, a bag. I think you can cut it right and run the cue ball up by the 15, maybe. I don't know. He could actually even shoot the four from where he's at. Looks like that's what he's going to do. And there you have it, folks. That's why I'm not a Masters player. Yeah, Dano's tough as nails. Looks like we're going to go 1-1 one, one here if he gets on this. That's too good. That is uh, way too good. Now, uh, I do believe we have an update on the tar match as well. Hey, Kevin, give me an update on the tar match. Huh? Give me an update on the tar match. I've got to send my assistant over to check out the uh, the tar match and see how Shane's doing over there. Last I saw when I walked by, uh, Shane was battling back. I know that uh, in this rotation, uh, Shane was actually considered a slight dog to Efren because that is the game in the Philippines, and uh, I think he was battling back a little bit. Efren's up 10 to 8, and Efren's on 15 to 0. Efren is up 10 to 8 on Shane, and Efren is currently in the rack at 15 to 0. So, uh, Efren in the driver's seat, I believe that races to 20. Wow, that is a green monster for sure. That brake cue is just insane. He's really ripping them with that. Um, but as I was saying, though, Shane is up, right? Or Shane is down two games right now, 10 to 8. And, uh. Oh, no. Uh. Tippy rips that one, ready to run out, and uh, Tano hops up and goes, hey, wait a second, that's my break. I wouldn't know, but I was just so excited that I actually got out there. I think I, uh, I, think I would actually would have asked to just play that one right from where it lied. That was a hell of a rip. No, this is the right way to do it. Yeah, I hear you. That's what I would do, too. pulling out all the stuff. We got a little excited with that one, folks. Uh, it was Dano's break, so uh, Dano's gonna rip him here. <laughs> now Dano's saying what I just said. He would have taken him from where they lied. So here on this next rack, he'll probably ask to borrow Tippy's green monster break you.
Oof. Tough layout for three in the eight tied up, but... This could be interesting here. Yeah. The stripes aren't laying bad. I don't hate them from where they're at. Um, you can figure out a way to move that seven ball out of the way, but you almost got to take... Well... Yeah, you might be able to work the solids here. I know the three will go up here in the corner from the eight. Yeah, you. Well, I was going to say you almost have to take the solids if you're going to try to run this from here, but you've got your work cut out for you regardless. So. Looks like you could play the seven here and uh, play into the eight or the three ball. You don't want to make the eight here, obviously. But try to. Re Get a little better table layout. Looks there. like that's what he's doing no. here. Oh, he's just gonna come. Yeah. I'm guessing he's gonna come off the five now and try to move that three ball out a little bit. He, he doesn't play like I do. I kind of just can't have it ripped into that. That's really one of the more interesting things with watching uh, eight ball, especially. You know, around a lot of the country, uh, bar box eight ball really isn't the uh, the flavor of the week. But um, you know, in this area, there are a lot of players, yourself included, Keith, that are they really elevate the game of bar box eight ball to a level that is right on par with some of these guys. Um, you know, playing one pack in that sort of game on big tables. I mean, these guys will. Uh, in, the, in these tight, tight quarters, make some amazing shots that you won't see on a big table because the balls just don't bunch up the same way. Exactly. That's why you don't see them moving balls around. Yep, yep. You know, one thing I would like to see change with this format, uh, I would like to see them bring in ridgeback rails and throw some four and a quarter inch pockets on these and really challenge these players to uh, to move the rock around and get that even slightly more precise, precise position than what they already do. But as you can see here, I think Dano's going to get out on this. I'm guessing he rolls the rock forward, takes the four ball, and then they eight back. Yeah, I think he's got quite a bit of angle on him, doesn't he? Yeah, it, it looks like he's got all the angle he needs. He's going to roll right underneath this. Yeah. He's going to roll right underneath this, take the uh, take the four ball forward and run the eight on a rack that I really did not think was runnable. He drifted it a little farther than he wanted there, though. I don't think he's in trouble, though. I, I mean, you can almost play this with bottom and uh, inside out, out and around the 13 if you really have to. Same shot is probably stop the cue ball, make the four, and take take what you get there on the eight. Take the eight ball all the yeah. way up to the same corner. You can cut that all the way up. Might play the cue ball up to thirteen. He, I almost wonder if you could just power draw it back off the bottom rail. Well, he went across. But he come back to take it shot. to the same pocket still. I don't hate it. I wouldn't bet against this shot. No, no, definitely not. It's a big hole up here. And it looks like he can see all of the eight ball and then some, so this is not a shot that he should miss. Another spectacular out. That was a fantastic out. Now Tippy will get his chance to rip him up. Looks like we've got a couple more prediction coming, predictions coming in. Uh, we've got Eric MacMuller saying Dano's going to win Hill Hill. Uh, looks like Drew11 is saying Tippy's going to win it Hill Hill. <laughs> and Eric MacMuller is telling True to get back to work. And then we have the one and only Kevin Kidd actually taking a night off here a little bit from the booth, so we don't get to see that very often. He's got a smile on his face, though, as usual. He's got a smile on his face and some, some guest accommodations. <laughs> well, Tippy lets that one rip. Looks about the same difficulty as the last rack that I didn't think was going to be able to be ran, and we all saw what happened there. So let's see what Tippy can fire back with. 
I can't tell from here, but does that one go past the nine? It does. So I'm driving a truck for that. So I'm thinking he goes solid to They all have homes. Looks like either one of them is actually runnable, but solids looks like the easier of the uh, the two options available. Only by a slight hair. He would be getting on the three so he can clear the five. Yeah. Which guy? Right behind Dan. Oh. Yeah, that's Monty. He had a few too many beers today. Hi, <laughs> Carolyn, by the way. <laughs> I heard you were watching too. Monty's not getting in trouble at all right now. <laughs> Monty is definitely minding his own business. You whooped the wake up right out of it. Well, looking around the room here, we've got uh, quite a few guests here by name. We've got uh, Joe, Joe in the house from Music Services. We've got uh, Mike Morris, Eric Reed, Randy Block, uh, Brian Ruth's down here, Shani Dvorak, Rich Rusat. Uh, we've got uh, Randy Thompson's down here, the one and only Annika Colseth. You know she's getting into trouble. Yeah, nice crowd to show up tonight. Yeah, there's probably a good, probably 40, 50 people down here watching the action. Uh, again, if you guys want to get down here, uh, one of our sponsors, JJ Billiards here in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, uh, on West 12th Street. Uh, come on down. The, uh, the beer is cold, the action is hot, and it is a heck of a match, as you can tell. So, uh, you know, get on down here. Also, with those spot with uh, JJ Billiards as a sponsor, we have uh, Midwest Amateur Pool. We have Keith Custom Cues, uh, Pool-Tracks.net, and GoPlayPool.com. So, I uh, want to thank all those guys again. Uh, if you can support all those affiliations because they support pool, and that's uh, that's something we need more of. They, we really, you know, if we're going to preserve this game and keep it around, we need all the help we can get. We all love it. That's why we're watching tonight. That's why we're here. So. Um, if you can get out and do something, even if it's small, get out and do it. it, it every little tiny bit helps. So. Well, looks like Kippy's in a little tricky spot here. Yeah, this is a... Uh, it looks like you can make the five, but you almost have to move the eight and kind of draw off it. You might have to spin around the seven slightly, just like that. That's a good shot. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful. I think, think the seven was in his way a little bit there. Just like that, another out. It's that four in a row now. Yeah, another out that I didn't think was going to happen, and uh, these guys are really starting to grab a gear. As I was saying earlier, um, you know, if you if you'd like to play and uh, you want to see some high quality bar box a ball, South this Dakota is, is tough to beat. Can you get me uh, angry with Oh. <laughs> I don't mind for you guys. Yeah. Actually, I do. Well, you know. Well, we've got uh, Daniel coming to the table now. We've got two breaking runs in a row here. Um, Doesn't get any better. Yeah, right, right. Uh, you know, really, I, in my opinion, eight ball is huge uh, to have a quality break. You need to make sure those balls are at good break. And then after that, I'd say the next thing is control whitey. Uh, don't get out of line. And uh, pattern play, really. I mean, those three things are, are key, and both these guys do it better than just about anybody else. Wait for it. Oh no. Oh no, he did drop a ball. <laughs> oh no, for Tippy? 
Yeah, I I would say so. Now Chris Hammer, he wins his set tonight, uh, nine to two, I believe, against Scotty Beck. And turns around and immediately invests in the Keith Q. I would say a wise investment. Very wise investment. <laughs> I think uh, if it, it, the next set, Scotty might be in trouble now that uh, they're both on even playing field. Scotty actually was playing and uh, breaking with both Keith cues, so uh, he better practice up for the next set. There, there's several talks. It uh, looks like Scotty Beck might be playing in either Colt Mayfield next, or uh, they were even talking about throwing a ring game together between Colt, uh, Scotty, and Hammer. Maybe get another one or two guys in there. I'm sure either one of these guys would love to hop into that little ring of Fire. Well, we fire at the stripes. This one ought to get interesting, folks. Get out your pen and paper because uh, you can learn something on this rack. Yeah, looks like trouble for a tippy. was the shot. From here it didn't look like he'd get by the ten. Yeah. Looks like the 14 ball goes. Yeah. But she had a lot. Shoot the 12 next, 14, 9, 15. That is one thing that I've noticed with, with with Dano. He does not hit the balls hard very often. He really doesn't. Most of his shots are He's they, use, they use a natural English. They let the you know he hits them just hard enough to ensure that the cue ball isn't going to roll off. They are using, uh, for the record, they are using a standard Valley cue ball. So that piece of junk that uh, Valley throws in these things with magnets and everything else in them, that is what they are using. So don't be. These aren't, uh, this is the same equipment you have at your local bar. So, yeah. if I don't, let me know. If I don't, start me one. Yeah. I just got a question from one of our viewers. They are playing uh, best of three sets. Uh, first set is already in the books. That was 10 ball. Dano took that one down. They are now playing 8 ball. Race to 7, even. Uh, best two out of three sets. If Tippy wins this one, they will play a third set, and that will be nine ball. And that uh, will determine the winner, which is $200. So uh, they are playing for uh, for a decent amount of cheddar. I know some guys kind of scoffed at that, saying it was only only 200 bucks. Well, if it's only 200 bucks, bring it on down, because these guys will uh, will gladly play you for that chump change all night long. So um, 200 bucks on the line here and it is uh, it is best of three sets and five in a row is that five is that five breaking runs in a row yeah these guys are these guys are crushing it tippy's got the green monster back out here I'm gonna predict this break cracks about 28 miles an hour We even have uh, a viewer tonight I told about down in Indonesia. So uh, if you're out there, Benny, thanks for tuning in. Uh, these guys are getting watched on the other side of the world tonight. How cool is that? That's very cool. And hello, Benny. <laughs>
Well, this ought to get a little tricky. Tippy dry breaks here. He did fram him, as predicted. Uh, this ought to be pretty interesting. That eight ball is laying right in the middle of a bunch of crap. So, uh, I don't even know how you're going to get to that from there. You almost got to take the 10 from here and draw back over a little bit into that cluster and take the 11. Right. Well, if he clears the 11 here, the 13 will go past okay. the 8. Well, he's, so looks like he's going to play. Maybe play the 9 down, then, then the 11? I'll tell you what, if you uh, if you do have trouble playing bar box eight ball, this is uh, the, I, you can learn a lot watching these guys play. I mean, I know I've already wow, taken probably shot. two balls off my game. That was amazing. He really stroked that one, but no love on the backside here. Oh, well, we can cut the twelve to the side here and come straight back up the table in thirteen. I mean, he's, if he can get the angle on the 11, he's got a good breakout shot. But you've got to, the 13 ball's got to roll nice for him here when he breaks it out, regardless. What do your hustlers go for if you were to make one? Uh, 395 is where they start out at. Is what they start out at? Yeah. I just had somebody ask me about it, so it's all right. We just had a question from one of the audience members here. Uh, Basic Keith Q, uh, the Sneaky Pete's and Hustlers with uh, with a very, very, very basic, all the same playability that the fancy stuff has. Uh, starting prices are at 395 with one shaft. And uh, go up from there, talk to the man. He's got a Facebook page, uh, Keith Hansen Q's. Uh, you can also get out to him at KeithQ's.com. Uh, there's also uh, a couple of folks you can reach out to. Uh, get in touch with him. He can get you some pricing. I think he's backed up through April. Is that right? Right now? Uh, through June, actually. June. So if you're thinking you're going to need something or if you want to, uh, to pick something up for uh, next year's pool league season, uh, get your orders in now. The man is busy. That is a fact. So... And I'm getting told here the uh, the first two were not breaking runs, but the last three were. So just to be clear on that, folks. They were at ERO's, correct? I, I'm not real sure. I know the second one, I believe, Tippy. Tippy, Tippy run out from, or uh, Tippy broke dry, Dan will run out. And it looks like uh, uh, Travis Page uh, has been informed. He uh, he won his cue, so um, that's awesome. Travis Page uh, got in on the raffle, I believe. He actually sent his payment via via PayPal. Um, so got in over the internet here. Uh, won a $450 Keith custom cue, sneaky Pete, and. Uh, yeah, he'll get that next time we see him. We have, we do have another one. Uh, we're selling 100 tickets at five bucks a piece. And uh, Keith, you were kind enough to donate that to us. It's, uh, it's a player. She's pretty. Uh, Coca Bolo and Bird's Eye Maple. It looks like best playing cues on earth. So get your tickets while you can. If you want some, um, you can message me uh, on Facebook, Justin Hansen. You can also message uh, Keith Hansen Cues or Kevin Kidd to get your tickets. So. Uh, just let us know. It's a great deal, and uh, it helps support this fine venture that allows us all to see the, uh, the high caliber of pool we're seeing tonight. It looks like 
He's calling. Where is he calling that? He's call, calling it in the corner. Calling it in the corner down over here in the bottom right corner pocket. I'm not sure how it It's like that. And then he called the eight inside. That was a beautiful shot. Yeah, it was. No love on the back, but. Really? <laughs> He hits that amazing shot, and his immediate response is, really, no love off that one. Like they say, one good shot deserves another. No kidding. You know, uh, I think, I can't remember who told me once, but uh, they told me something to the effect of you can't look like a hero if you shoot nothing but easy shots. See, you can. It's makeable, yeah, right by the seven. Z bank the eight and clear the seven here. He hit it good. Good, very good try there. Did, he didn't get quite enough spin on that, but he hit it good. Hit it about as good as you can get it. Well, Tippy's just playing cleanup now. I'd be awfully surprised if he doesn't get out on this rack. He should. It seems weird to be. Uh, Ooh, look at that. Oh. I believe they call that Tippy Love in these parts. Yeah. That'd be Tippy Love. It's now 3-3. Uh, three, three, so. Well, you, uh, you Hill Hill predictors are looking pretty good right now. They're, uh, they're really going tit for tat. I would actually like to see these do to... Uh, do like a ten ahead match or something. Yeah, the ten ahead, ten ahead eight ball could be a lot of fun, and uh, I, I almost think you could charge a mission for that if they play like this. Absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Lanny Hayes is in the house. His wife Kelly. <laughs> What's the tarmac looking like? <laughs> We've got Christy over here in the background. The ladies are getting crazy. <laughs> It looks like we've got plenty of girls in the house here. We've got uh, Annika, Cole Seth, Christy Hine. <laughs> and, there, and evidently we've got a crowd of twerkers. So if the pool wasn't enough to get you down here, get on down here and catch a show. Okay. 
Looks like we've got an update on the tar match. It's 11-9 to Efren. Uh, Shane is battling back. I know that's got to be a heck of a, a heck of a match to watch. So if you're tuning in with us, we thank you very much. Uh, that is the last tar that they're going to be doing a one-on-one -on -one competition, uh, as far as Justin Collette knows. And a uh, big shout-out to those guys and what they've done for the pool industry. They put together a great product, and uh, they really go above and beyond to, uh, to provide that product. So um, I know Shane was... Uh, I wouldn't say heavily underdog uh, in that rotation match, but he uh, he definitely was not the favorite, and uh, he's he's taking it to him. So uh, the magician hopefully is uh, teaching Shane a couple more tricks, and uh, he'll come out on the other side of this one even better than he was before. So back to the action here now. Uh, Dano breaks dry. Tippy comes to the table with uh, a little bit of a mess. We've got one or two problems to solve, but if I was a betting man, I'd say they run this one out regardless, because the last three I didn't think they would, and they did. Yeah, it's definitely a high-quality match. Here, This game here, uh, the one ball could be trouble here if you take stripes. Which may be cleared by the three. Jesus. Yeah, beautiful shot. Wow, beautiful shot. He stroked that thing about as good as he can. Three balls in one shot. As Earl would say, how strong is that? And I think we are really starting to see some uh, some good old-fashioned tippy pull, which I gotta say is one of my favorite things to watch. Been a little out of line there, but not bad. There we go. Is that 13 ball go past the 8? I believe so. He just doesn't want to get locked up here. A little tippy love. <laughs> little tippy love. <laughs> Now that right there, folks. Wow. What a rack. Wow. Beautiful thing to watch. No Now, as I mentioned a couple of times, uh, you can definitely do a lot of learning watching these guys play this game. Um, this match will be uploaded later to uh, to Midwest Amateur Pools page. Um, you'll be able to watch it again for free, and uh, there, this is definitely worth watching a second time. I mean, there's some quality, quality pool going on here. So. Um, that link I think we can provide possibly uh, on our Facebook page and whatnot. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, all these matches that we stream do get uploaded later for uh, for further viewing. So um, quick shout out to our sponsors again: uh, Midwest Amateur Pool, Pool-Tracks.net, GoPlayPool.com, uh, JJ's Billiards, and Keith Custom Cues for making this possible. Oh man, he puts it in the drink. It's one thing to it's one thing to dry break on the screen, but uh, scratching on the break is something you just can't do. Uh, you know, I never realized just how big that is. Uh, this year, I was fortunate enough to play a little bit in the Masters Division with uh, with Keith and uh, Mike Bloomberg and them guys. And uh, I tell you what, the number one thing you cannot do if you're playing bar box eight ball is scratch on the break. You're just asking to get run out on at that point.
Is he eyeballing that 13 for the corner? Absolutely. Bobby, you 13 9. Well, you come back up here. Hmm. Yeah. I think he just wanted to get that ball out of the way, solve his problems up up top first, and then move down table. Where is he going to go with that eight ball? I'm assuming... In the side where he's at him. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a text message here on my phone. Tell Dano to take his sunglasses off the top of his head. It's been dark outside for hours. <laughs> Here it looks like he's going to shoot this and clip the seven, and then the eights. Yeah, you go about anywhere. Pretty much. You know, that's one thing that Dano does really good. He's got great form, stands right over his cue stick, takes his time, didn't feel quite right, so he got up on the shot, got back down, and rifled it in the way you're supposed to. So. Okay. contest at halftime. Uh, all the ladies at the table. <laughs> What's that? The ladies at the table are going to have a twerking contest at halftime. I was told to tell you that. I was just informed if, uh, if Tippy wins this set in between these next two sets, they are going to have a twerking contest. Uh, so if you have not, uh, if you have not considered coming down here yet, uh, there's one more incentive: uh, twerking contest. So whatever the hell that is. Four four, you hill hill guys are still looking good. I believe there were also a couple of requests here between these, uh, between this set and the next one, if, if there is in fact the next one, uh, to do a what's in your case type uh, interview with both Tippy and Dano, kind of see what they're shooting with, what they carry with them for tip tools and whatnot. So um, we may do that as well. Kind of, kind of depends. The girls down here are getting a bit squirrely though, so. <laughs> It ought to get interesting. I think they're going to do the twerking contest no matter what tonight. <laughs> no kidding. Whether there's anybody here to watch or not. <laughs> wow. I didn't even think that went past the seven ball. <laughs> And it's like surgeon in them. Sad gotcha. That cue ball.
looks like he's got uh, he's got the out here. He just has to get this angle here on the 10 ball. It looks like uh, he's shooting the 12 now in the corner. He'll take uh, his angle on the on the 10 after that, and he should be out. Does he take the 10 up to the corner here and draw off the 7? No, he's got it inside. Ah. This is going to try and take the 8 in the side now as well. And that, folks, is why I am not a Masters player. So, another break and run, it looks like. Turning the green monster loose again. I make anybody look good. Pays well, doesn't it? I am uh, talking with my buddy in Indonesia right now. He says uh, pool should be stream free. He says that's why tires going out of business because they don't understand how to sell the product. So I'm doing. He said, I'm commentating on a stream right now. Oh yeah, what is it? So I sent him Midwest Amateur Pool on new stream. I got two guys watching. In, I got two guys watching this in Indonesia right now because they're bored. They're watching some great pool too. And it's great pool. And it's great. And good pool. Well, he's got some decisions to make. Yeah, Looks you can't like give either one of these guys a sniff at the table. No, no, you really can't. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of animosity towards eight ball in uh, in the pool world, but really, I mean, and I and self self myself included, I am not a big fan, but. There are a lot of facets to this game, and when it's played at a high level, it's really tough not to appreciate it. It's a game of options. Yeah. I think that's why I like nine ball so much, because it's easier to uh, to pick your options. You've got the lowest ball on the table, and that's it. Yeah, it's more of a player's <laughs> game. There's not a lot of thinking to be done, because you know what you have to do. Yeah. Next, you know? Yeah. The, the, I mean, there's still obvious ball, strategy. You have to play it to give yourself options all the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Now this is uh, interesting. You think he's going to duck here? I mean, I think the three ball goes in the side, but... He's looking at the two ball, and I can see the angle perfect from here. And that thing is tight, tight, tight. I think you can sneak it, sneak it by, but you almost have to play that pocket speed. Beautiful shot. Is he Beautiful ducking? Shot. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I don't see we're gonna. See, I don't think we're gonna see a whole lot of safety play in this set. What do you think? I haven't seen any yet. <laughs> I don't know why they'd start. No, I'm always in here. You decide. I'm gonna go see Josh and Brooke. I'm gonna play Darcy against my friends.
I think you can draw back here and, and get on the six and shoot the six next. I where think, I'm sitting. I it think goes. so. I, I mean, that's. I'd like to say that's the way I'd do it. That's the way I'd try to do it, at least. Well, you might be playing into it, but it'll go. I, from where I'm sitting, it'll go. It almost looks like you don't even really have to spin it or nothing. It'll go nice. It'll even give you shape. Is he gonna take the four here, or is he gonna is he gonna clean up the five now, save his options? Hmm. Decisions, decisions. And this right here is the reason why I play nine ball, because it's easy. I'd be shooting four. Well, you think this would be the spot to get on the six? You'd think so. If he sees it. I don't know if he sees it. He has to see it. These guys don't miss nothing. Yeah, that's that's a fact. Thought he had to break it out. Well. well, I'd like to say I know better, but he's one of the best bankers around, so this ain't gonna scare him any. Well, he's gonna play a safety, maybe. He's looking at cutting it to the corner. I'm busy. Johnny. We're calling a ref for this one, Very folks. Close. Looks like they're gonna take. Looks like. Are you kidding me? Now I gotta go out and find me a ref. I got no. these matches. Huh? <laughs> oh, now here we go. <laughs> now tell me, just does the. Does a tie here go to the shooter or what? I was always taught tie goes to the runner, but I was also taught that if you're in doubt, hit that son of a gun as hard as you can so that they can't tell. Right. <laughs> well, the rule says you got to hit your ball first, right? That's what it says. Well, uh oh, I think we just got our first opening here. Yeah, it looks like we're, uh, I gotta say, I think Dano's batting cleanup here. All those balls go. I mean, he's got a little trouble down there with that seven this ball in the way, but. This isn't easy here either, though, is it? Does he have a. Looks like the nine goes. The 12, 12 looks like, the side, right? yeah. You can cut the 12 on the side. Looks like fade in for the 13 back in the corner, and the nine ball goes, uh, goes down table, and plus he's got an emergency hanger up here in the corner. That he's going to burn up right now. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. He's going to play over for the uh, nine ball now. I'm guessing stop it, take the 13, and shoot the eight inside. You notice when Dan, the way Dan plays, he doesn't move the cue ball any more than he has to. Yeah, yeah, he really. It's simple. Well, gets he moved a, it a little more than he had to there, there, obviously. But. So what do you do? What do you do from here, really? I mean, you've got to hold. You've got to kind of hold can, that cue ball for the 13. You could almost play uh, high inside, bump that 13 out, and hope you hit it square. Yeah, you can put right hand English on it here and, and kick the 13 over. Like that, yeah? Just like that. Both Not a best. lot of love, but it's a makeable shot. That's cuttable. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's thin, but you can cut that. The angle on the screen doesn't suggest that, but it is a cuttable ball, I assure you. It's almost, almost an inch off the rail. Oh, yeah. Looks like that's what he's going for. Beautiful. Cuts it. 
Getting the game five ball. No. Nope. Little Dano. Uh, There's the eight. And Tippy gives it to him. Dano on the hill again. Christy looking good with her prediction by three. Well, guys, if Dan does break and run this next game, stick around. We may stir up a little action for you, find a couple of guys to throw in the box here. You want to try and walk around and stir up some action, throw in the box here, or you want to be done? Stir up some action, throw in the box. What are you talking about? Well, if Dan Do will break some runs in this, you want me to find a couple oh. of guys and throw in the box here? Well, they're going to play the nine ball match. Regardless. Oh, good. Is he already? He's on the already. Yeah. Tippy's taking a quick bathroom break. We'll get going here in just a second. I'm supposed to go wake up uh, Monty and tell him to call his wife or kid. Hey, was that his wife that was chatting? Yeah. His kid, actually. I was like, Monty's to get his second or third one. Right. If I don't, Pfeffer does. He's incapable. He's like past. He, he can't operate a ball. He can't operate a Something, uh, match, huh? yeah, barring something extenuating, looks like Dano is going to take this, and uh, Mrs. Dano Hines, Christy Hine, is going to look good at her uh, at her uh, by three prediction. And that right there is uh, the best two out of three. So uh, Dano wins the eight ball, seven to four. Not for lack of effort, that's for certain. 
And uh, I've been told that they are going to play the nine ball. I'm not sure what they've set up for that, but they are going to play the nine ball all the same. You so, see, they're, they're getting some side action going on. It looks like they've got a little something something on it. I'm not sure what, but this is for some cheddar. So they aren't just playing for fun here, folks. So if you want, get in on the action. Um, I'm thinking Tippy finally grabs a set here. I uh, he almost has to. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be t it wouldn't be Tippy if he didn't. So um, my prediction is going to be Tippy by two. The Tippy Two. Kevin, Kevin. Did you stop that recording? Do it.